Hi, I'm Thomas Du Bois. And I'm not Meredith Burris. I'm Howard Hitchcock. And sorry, gang, you're stuck with us today. Meredith's on vacation, so we're not quite as pretty. Sorry about that. But it That's is a, what it is. It is what it is. But this is still The, the Fix. fix. Another race in the books. Kansas finished. A great race. Looked like the Toyotas were going to dominate. But once again, Harvick came through. In the clutch. After his race in Charlotte and the finish there, he needed a strong performance to lock himself into the next round of the chase. And he did it. And you guys definitely want to order this race win die cast. It has all the confetti from Victory Lane. It's going to have the race win markings. It's got the chase markings. This is the car that locked him into the next round of the chase. You definitely want to order this car from LionelRacing.com or through your local dealers. And remember, we get to celebrate lunch today, Bloomin' Monday. Bloomin' Monday, great. And we also have all these great cars for 2017 that you definitely want to get your pre-orders in for immediately. We have Joey Logano's Shell Penzo car. We have Joey Logano's AAA car, Chase Elliott's Napa Auto Parts car, Casey Kane's Great Clips car, Brad Kozlowski's Miller Light car. We have Dale Jr.'s number 88 Nationwide car. Ryan Newman's number 31 Caterpillar car, Austin Dillon's triple A car. We also have Eric Almarola's U.S. Air Force car. We have Casey Kane's Farmer's Insurance car. We have Eric Almarola's number 43 Smithfield car. And we also have the discount tire car by Penske driven by Ryan Blaney. It'll also be driven by Joey Logano and Brad Kozlowski. You want to get your pre-order in for these great 2017 cars immediately. Order them through LionelRacing.com or through your local dealers today. <laughs> Wait until you see what we did in Mayor's office. Stay tuned later on this episode. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm here with Mac Phillips with Brand Art. He makes these awesome helmets that we've been offering through the club for several years now, and they are just fantastic. We've got the latest release here that I want to let him talk about, and I just really love these helmets. If you guys have not ordered these or seen these in person, I really say they have to check these out. They are so detailed on the inside, it's phenomenal. From the radio, from the visors, I mean, it's how far you've come in the, in the year, this year with this new design yes. is just phenomenal. But really, I just want to kind of give you a chance to talk about the process because it seems like they've come so far and the designs look so much more like the helmet. So really, I just want to give you an opportunity to talk about how much work you've put into this and working with the teams and artwork. And I mean, it seems like it's a lot of work involved. So I just really want to kind of really share with the, the fans of these helmets and the NASCAR fans of what all the work that goes involved with these helmets. Well, thanks for including us. We, uh, yes, a lot of work's gone into it. Uh, the biggest change this year is this is a tool that we created ourselves. So with that, with the pumper, we actually, this helmet comes in two styles. It has pumper and without pumper. So you may see next year some, some helmets where drivers may be in outlaws in some of those areas. We're actually even doing a, a Formula One test helmet. Oh, wow. Okay. So, but the general aspect of it is it's very close to the real helmet. And um, we have been doing uh, hydro dipping something we started this year okay. and with the carbon fiber effect uh, various colors uh, we will be working on the true timber camo patterns with uh, Dale Jr. next year which will be a big deal. Very nice. Um, but specifically this helmet right here is Chase Elliott's Napa helmet and it was a bit of a challenge because it's chrome. Yeah. And uh, But it looks great. So we got his helmet over at Hendrick okay. um, and we worked with it and replicated it and it's been a labor of love in a way because it's pretty complicated but it's actually uh, chrome dipped and then dyed to match the Napa color you know you, you tint it to the dye okay and then within it you'll see within Chase's helmet he mm -hmm. actually and this is a helmet done by Jason Bean so this is okay. actually a helmet that he would have commissioned right and you actually have the right from Jason Dean. The team does. The team, right. the team okay. does. So, but we work with Jason, okay. and Jason approves all the work. Okay, so we're kind of working for both. The artist tends to be an artist. 
but the team tends to have to make sure that our that our logos and all of that kind of stuff is done. So it's kind of a combination of the three of us Got to make sure that when we go to commercial production, that Napa is okay with. Gotcha. Okay, so and everything is, is proper and so. What you've got here is the other feature we've done this year. Not only are we plating the helmets, but we're also now doing the film. We're doing, I guess we did gold, silver, and this blue. So mm -hmm. on Chase's helmet, he had blue. So we, we think that this is uh, the closest you're gonna get um, to what he actually, actually this is probably in better shape than his is now because his has been yeah. pretty bad. But. <laughs> Well, it's so detailed. I mean, it's got the head, you got the head and neck restraints. You got the tin advisors now. I mean, it's fully detailed on the inside. The radio, what is this considered the radio and That's the radio the connector, yeah, for the communication. Okay. And the, the main thing we do, because these are not intended to be worn, is we've actually upgraded this year to a, a secure bolt. Okay. Uh, we had some pretty creative folks who were trying to take the bar out, but it has a bar inside. It's not intended to be worn. Yeah. Um, and then the other part of the equation was this year we, when we tooled this helmet, we actually did a half scale of the mini. And it's exactly the same. The only thing we didn't do was put the radio piece on. But um, for us, it, it made it, when we run the decals and all the process on this and the painting, it's all done in the same lot. Okay. So it's, it's, it's a common, and this is a half scale, so it's larger than our previous years. All right. Well, it looks good. I mean, everybody's been asking about this helmet. And so we finally have it online. We finally got some photoshops of it online. So it's in production now. It's in production now. Should see it. I am going back. Uh, we are, I'm supposed to see the first production on the 29th. Okay. And uh, we'll be shipping out sometime around the first of November. Okay. So it says uh, 30 days on the water. Is that how it goes? We'll come a little quicker. A little quicker than that. So, so we'll quicker. probably ship by the end of November potentially uh, for customers. Hopefully, if not sooner. That, oh, very good. Okay. So end of November on this helmet. Yeah. How about? Uh, so I know some of the questions the, the customers have are they're always asking for new helmets. Um, so could you give us any sneak peek? And then I know they're even asking. They were one of the big questions they've really been asking is Skittles, Cobbler Skittles. I mean that's such a bright, vibrant car with all the all the Skittles all over it, but it would look great. So Skittles uh, with what we've done. Yes, in fact, I just left Joe Gibbs Racing just 20 minutes ago, and we just okay. photographed that helmet. It's a Jason Bean helmet. Okay. And we also photographed uh, the interstate, the new interstate batteries helmet that Jason did too. So those will be uh, now. When you when you say new helmet, you referring to the 2017, not something 17, he's running now. 17. Okay. So what we're working on now is to get this stuff in in the process and in the delivery queue for Daytona. Gotcha. We're already working Daytona now. Very good. So, yeah. so yes, so Kyle will have, um, have those offerings and that'll balance out. That'll actually have a four helmet set that we'll be working with him okay. this year. Well, these things are great. And uh, Mac, I really appreciate your time. Yeah. I mean, I know the customers are, yeah. are just dying for these helmets. And I gotta tell you, this is, Superman was probably my favorite one originally because it had the gold tinted visor yep. that you, that, that, was that upgrade is just that fantastic. Was our first and test. now we got, uh, now we got the new Chase with the blue visor and the chrome dipping is just, I mean, that's just fantastic. So absolutely. Um, where can they order these helmets? I know we sell them through RCCA. Um, typically we say through dealers. Do dealers buy these? I know team shops have uh, them. The team shops will do it. Uh, some of the drivers do it. We also run through the foundations and part of what we do is we donate a portion of all of our production goes to the foundations. We've done some oh, very with nice. you guys in okay. Texas yeah. and yeah. things yeah. like that. That's that's so that's amazing. actually part of, part of our mission statement is to do that. And uh, so you'll see that through the foundations. You'll see it. Um, you'll see it through a couple of wholesalers. We don't sell to a lot. Okay. We try to keep, and we don't overload the market. Uh, we may not deliver as fast as you would like, but to get to what we're doing takes a little there, bit. Yeah. yeah, we will not do it unless we're happy with what we're doing. Okay. We just won't put it out. Uh, the other side to this is. Um, this helmet, the sister to the uh, to the Kyle Bush helmet, was the Crispy helmet that we. Oh yeah. So that actually found its way to the White House a couple of weeks. Oh, ago. did it really? Oh wow. So okay. we're kind of tickled that 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 they thought enough of the helmet to get it. Yeah. So it made it to the White House. The president they actually presented. It? Yeah, the team had their championship meeting, and then the, yeah, and you'll see it on it's out. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. But those are stories tied to the real helmet, tied to real events, and that's kind of what we're trying to get. Very good.
All right. Well, you heard it here first, man. This is uh, Mac with Brand Art. Great product, great company, great guy. Hey gang, it's that time again to open up our mailbag and answer the questions you have for us this week on The Fix. One of the biggest questions we always get is about our polling period and our MOQ process. So who better pull in than the president of our company, Howard Hitchcock. I got him in here just for this short time while Meredith is out as well to get a couple of these questions answered because I figured you'd like the answers from him better than me. <laughs> so the first question we have is really about the polling process. They ask us all the time is, why do we pull a die cast for a minimum of two to three weeks, sometimes maybe four weeks? Why do we have that type of uh, timing on a polling period? Mm -hmm. So the polling period is our selling process. And what we decided to do several years ago was build to order. So as a collectible die cast, one of the things that devalues die cast more than anything is to have excess quantity. As the manufacturer and the distributor of the product, we have to sell that product into the marketplace through your local dealers, into wholesalers who, who supply your local dealers or directly to ourselves online. And so one of the things we want to make sure that happens is we don't have a lot of excess product on the shelf at the end of the year or at the end of the selling period. So the uh, selling process that we use while the artists are creating the art and then we're sending that art to the factory and the factory begins the sampling process, we overlay that with a selling process. We don't typically let that go more than two or three weeks because if we do it delays the delivery of that car to you because we ultimately don't start production until we know how many of those cars we're going to build. But that's why we use the selling process to determine what our build quantity will be. Alright, very good. How about MOQ? A lot of the questions are around the, the quantity of 700 and, and if we don't get there, why do we not try to build below less? So can you answer some of the questions on why we hit, try to hit that number? Sure. So MOQ means minimum order quantity and those are established run sizes that we have built with our factory and that is how we build all of our pricing structure. So essentially the factory has committed to build the cars at certain levels depending on which car. So if we have a hood open, it's a 500 MOQ. If we have a Hodo or a hood open trunk open, that's a 700 MOQ. Um, and we use those MOQs to make sure that there's enough demand in the marketplace to have the car make sense. So the fact, as I said, the factories agreed to run these products at these certain sizes. Now most products when they run, as a consumer you may not realize this, but they actually run tens of thousands typically, and that's what most factories are looking for. Diecast collectibles, as you know, are very, very limited and very small. If, you, if you've been collecting for many years, you may remember the days of action where it would be not uncommon to see well over 10,000 on a, on a silver sticker on the side of the box. And today, it's sort of unusual to see something that tops a few thousand. So the market has changed a lot over the years and we've actually lowered that minimum order quantity in that course of time. It actually used to be uh, 3502 was the minimum order quantity, and that was several years ago when I was actually a customer of Actions and buying it for my company. Um, but today we run at a much much smaller level, understanding what the market dynamics are. Unfortunately, sometimes cars don't hit minimum order quantity. There are a few exceptions where we do produce a car at an under MOQ run size, but there are financial implications to doing that. And at the end of the day, this is a business. And so for the business and the pricing structure that we've established, we have to maintain the MOQs. All right, thanks for all that helpful insight there, Howard. I hope those answered your questions. If you have questions for us, be sure to send them to us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter using hashtag the fix. So, if you remember, it was probably just over a year ago, <sighs> Meredith really got me when I went on vacation. She confetti bombed my office. I had streamers hanging from my ceiling. I had confetti all over the place. I'm still pulling out confetti. Still to this day, I'm opening up catalogs. I'm opening invoices. Confetti's falling out. You know what? She thought she got me. She thought she got me. <sighs> Now's the payback. You know, <laughs> I can't wait. So. Even she helped me clean it up, and she thought, okay, I helped him clean it up, so I'm okay, I'm okay, I helped him clean it up. Nope, she's finally on vacation. Now it's my turn. Oh yeah, boom, it's gonna be big. Wait till you see this, oh yeah. <laughs>